Today, I would like to welcome to the stage our moderator, uh, Ram Sundaram. Good afternoon, everyone, and um, thank you for coming to attend our panel session at 1.30 in the last day. We really appreciate it. I would like my uh, panelists to briefly introduce themselves and give their uh, view on the customer onboarding, customer delight experience. Davina, would you like to take a minute? Sure, so hi everybody, my name is Davina Ball um, and I'm from Zumo, um, conventional asset holders, um, as well as you know, creating a UX and a brand that people really love as well, which I think we've achieved quite well. Thanks, Davina. Ludas? Yeah, hi, so uh, my name is Ludas, I'm the founder of Fundato, and we are streamlining the processes uh, of the KYC, both on, on front end and the back end. Uh, and we see like uh, all the challenges that were already mentioned, you know, so all the bounce rates, drop rates, uh, where the customers are struggling, and, and so, so and that has to be supported. And uh, of course, like when uh, we are onboarding our like customer, you know, so that uses these solutions, so that's uh, more like a you know PM uh, activity with all the angles that includes like uh, first of all the compliance part. You know, Elements needs to be there uh, in terms of the compliance and uh, the only laundering procedures. Uh, and then uh, it goes to actually the product people, especially the UX people. Because uh, uh, the other part is then the you know, drops, bounces, uh, you know, uh, how, how much of the time spent, and, and that kind of part. And then it's also related to the IT people that does the integrations uh, and get that integration. So, so, and that includes then like lots of the different uh, interests that uh, needs to be managed. So, uh, each of your customers would have their own user experience teams, and preferably have their own user experience expectations and flows. Does this increase the level of customization that that's requirements that are placed on you, or can you have a standard process that fits into pretty much all cases? How do we make it as accessible uh, to as many people as possible? One of the things that we always talk about is, you know, we want crypto to be smart money for everyone. So it's really simplifying the process, what it is, and making it more understandable and accessible. And through videos is a, is a massive thing in social media. For retail customers, you typically have financial literacy as a sort of prerequisite of which sometimes you need to work at. But on top of that, you also have the crypto literacy. If the documents are not recognized properly, uh, you know, we use also third-party processor for, for certain type of documents. Um, if you don't adjust your process to the different jurisdictions, for example, in Brazil or, or in Latin America, Latin America, they might not have all uh, the documents that are, for example, are required in Europe and vice versa. So you have to be able to customize the experience really well. So that's what we have learned um, in, in the last uh, years, and that's what we are really focusing when it comes to user experience. We have an internal user experience team. You're trying to replicate the user experience of traditional financial platforms rather than create something unique because that's what your customers are used to? So, well, the way we are approaching it is, uh, you know, what I, I tend to define the crypto trading platform is the really spend so much time in designing the processes that are designed around our users. Either they are retail or they're institution, it doesn't matter. But the, we always bring the user and his experience as the first most important uh, thing for us. While I can provide, can re-upload the photo, can, can adjust the information at any point in time, is, is really important, right? So instead, when you usually use a a banking KYC process, it feels like we are still living in the 90s with some banks, right? So we, we design our process in a much more um, you know friendly way because crypto is started as a movement to bring uh, financial assets, more democratic financial assets to the unbanked, right? All this movement of banking the unbanked means that you have to assume that there are retail, but also institutions that, or businesses, not just necessarily financial institutions, but even just businesses, groceries, 
I mean, we are here today with Bitfinex Pay. That is a product that needs to adapt to, to the uh, guy that is running um, you know, um, a trading service and selling you know, um, products through his uh, really high technological platform to the grocery in a small town in, uh, in Mexico, right? So you have to be able to catch both use cases and that's why I say we learn how to create our user experience around the user rather than vice versa. Thanks for that. You brought up an important point. Uh, we tend to, we are a um, um, jargon intensive industry. We, we have our own internal definitions of processes and, and terms and so on, which is not necessarily uh, publicly uh, available. Do you see that Lutas as a problem in that we are, are uh, KYC AML onboarding processes? One, one of the really crucial parts of that, that journey is your CS team, where, where it does kind of hit the fan and, and someone does need to speak to a, you know, an actual person. You know, I can say that our CS team, and even when I speak to you know, people that I come across day to day, they, they're always praising our customer support. And I think getting that bit right, because that's often by the time a customer gets there, they're really frustrated. Why are my documents not uploading? Properly. So being able to manage that correctly is really important as well. So now you're going against the party line that customers actually are happy about uh, KYC ML onboarding. I think they'll always find paperwork. We all have to do it ourselves, right? Uh, if we're uh, buying a house or, or doing something, it's never easy. Yeah. Uh, but I think by doing it, it gives us that layer of comfort that actually there's governance going on and there's extra verification. Do you agree? Follow? Well, definitely. Um, if you have, it's important to create a protected environment. That is quite clear. And so we are seeing, especially also in the last days, news about um, um, this never-ending news about uh, how digital assets can be used for criminal activity. Right. So in the way, requiring information from customers is also a way to protect the other customers. Right. Everyone in the platform. So I think that if you explain that um, as um, to the users, they will understand it because. They definitely don't want to see their, to have problems because you are dealing with people's money. So they're really, people are really attached to their money, rightfully. So you, you should be in a position where you never, should never create problems to people's money. So getting information, the right amount of information, of course, I'm a big believer in the right to privacy of people, of course. At the same time, we are a centralized platform. We understand there are requirements and these requirements are protecting users themselves so um, I think that I, I on our on our side we try to do our best to educate our users also to make uh, we understand that also the way the pla our platform uh, is being used has changed over time right before it was just mainly a web platform and now is uh, the mobile side of it is uh, is growing like crazy it's, uh, especially in all the developing countries so you have also to redesign the, appro the, the approach to the onboarding. That is not just KYC ML, it's also res uh, explaining all the security practices that the user has to perform. Like there is a two-factor authentication, uh, have long passwords, you know, um, change the password periodically, because it's all fun and games, but until you lose an eye, right? So if you don't teach the user to provide, to correctly set up the account, also on the security side, they might complain even about that, right? They might not want the 2FA, but then when they lose money, they wish they had the 2FA, and they might be, be upset because you didn't tell them that they should have had the 2FA. So we started from the concept that security comes first. It comes above everything. So we force everyone to have a 2FA, a long password, or a crash to password, and so on and so forth. So we and uh, we have a super trained, a highly trained customer support that also guides the users if they have questions and you know ease their mind on why we are doing this. We are doing this for them, for us as well, because of course we have to report to regulators, but we are also doing it for them.